Well, we are getting close to March, which means it's almost NCAA tournament time. The Manhattan Jaspers have gone dancing eight times, including the last two years. We are joined now by the head coach of the Manhattan Jaspers, Steve Masiello, joining us in studio once again. Great to have you back. Thanks for having me. On a, right in the middle of your four-game road trip, you join yeah. us in studio, so hopefully we'll be a, uh, continue to be a good luck charm for you here. But this is, when, this is your time right now. <laughs> this is when you really start to ramp it up. Uh, over the past four years, in February and March, the Jaspers are 31 and 11 in that stretch. Coaches always talk about how they want to play great at the yeah. end of the season. You're doing it. Yeah. What's happening? Good players. That's the that's the first oh, thing. Uh, really, it's a, it's we talk a lot about the process, um, and I think early in the year, November, December, we'll take a loss to learn a lesson, um, and that means playing some young guys in some situations maybe that most coaches won't play young guys in. Uh, we try to think of the big picture early in the year and get them to understand. And I think they start to figure it out a little bit and they get confidence. And that's what we call trusting the process. As that's going on, the other thing I think we do a very good job of, and our guys are great at it, we play more freely this time of year. Our style is we'll get that much more aggressive. We'll try to really turn you over that much more when I think a lot of programs and a lot of teams play a little closer to the vest. Right. We're trying to really speed the game up even more and get after you and force some turnovers, get some easy buckets, and have a really a lot of fun play. Yeah, you get about eight turnovers per game right now, but this has really been a bit of an up-and-down season for you. Yeah. So, so maybe this year more than any other year is it as important for you guys to really step it up and, I guess, hit the nitro button at the end of the season like before? Yeah, you know, we've had some injuries this year that really have, have hurt us. I think probably three of our top seven or six are out. Um, and that's really affected us. But some young guys have really stepped up and done some good things. So it's really important, though, that we capitalize on every opportunity we can. And that's, you know, our guys are being bought into the system and understanding what their job is and doing a great job with it. Well, it seems like every year some team in every conference has – exceeded expectations no and doubt. this year uh, that would be Monmouth so far Monmouth has beaten UCLA USC Notre Dame Georgetown they have one loss in their last 13 games and that was to you <laughs> Yeah. So tomorrow night, do yeah. we expect an at least elevated atmosphere against Monmouth? Well, listen, King Rice is a, is a dear friend of mine. He does a terrific job, and he's built that program. We both became head coaches together really in about two weeks of each other. And what he's done with that program is just phenomenal. And he's built it from the ground up, um, and, and they're having a great year. The atmosphere tomorrow is going to be one of the toughest, toughest atmospheres we've ever played in. Um, they, they do a great job of packing their, their fans in, their students in. Their arena is unbelievable. Um, and the fact that I think we were fortunate enough to beat them the last time at our place is going to add to it that much more. Sure, and their RPI is 30, yeah. which is yeah. amazing. Yeah. I mean, how much more reaffirming is that going to be for your squad if you can get a win tomorrow? Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, it's, it's a great win. And, and I think this time of year, I think your team kind of has its confidence or it's not going to have it. a win here, a win there is going to matter. Um, but you, what you want to do is come out and be very competitive. That, that's the key. Um, you know, and not to start thinking, you know, way ahead of it, but you almost sometimes it's scary if you beat a team twice in a regular season, you don't want to see them right in the in the postseason. So you got to be careful when you want to beat teams. Well, you know, it almost seems like the story with Monmouth this year has not been as much about their big wins. <clears throat> it's been about their mob bench. Yeah, we saw recently Iona and them got a little yeah. chippy yeah, afterwards. OK, yeah. so I wanted to get a, an opposing coach's reaction to the mob bench. Yeah. What do you think of their celebration? Well, I think one, you have to have a good team in order to have a mob bench. OK, and well, they, you have and to they, win is what you're saying. And they, and, they, and they have that. But look at how much attention and exposure it's brought for the college. And I think there's nothing wrong. I think it's been within the game. I think it's been very pure. I think it's guys having fun at the end of the bench. Some coaches might not like it. Um, but listen, if, if, if the coach of the program is okay with it, there's nothing wrong with it. I think those guys, I know some of those guys at mom to the end of the bench, they're great kids. They come to practice. They work. And I think they've added their own spin to the organization. They've really done a nice job with it. Uh, but the most important thing is you have to be good, and they're good. Okay, all right. So th some would say it is, uh, it's antics. Yeah. And, and it takes attention away from the actual play on, mm -hmm. the, on the court. Mm -hmm. uh, where is that line drawn, though? Wh what is the line of going too far? Well, the, the line of going too far comes into play if you don't achieve your goals. You know, <laughs> if you don't achieve your goals and you don't do the things you set out to do. So it's a win-based idea. I, it, it really is. You know, the only time people talk about it it, negatively is when you lose. And then they're going to say, well, the banter. They, listen, at the end of the day, their kids having fun. There's nothing wrong with that. I think, you know, I don't think they're getting carried away. I've never seen them get carried away. If the coach of a team is okay with it, then you should be okay with it. 
All right, I want to talk a little bit more about your squad because your top scorer, Shane Richard, yeah. one of your original recruits, fourth yeah. in the conference in scoring and really under-recruited yeah. when he was coming out of New York City. Mm -hmm. As a guy who was born, raised in New York City, you're a New York City kid. Yes. Does that make things a little more advantageous I when think, you're trying to get a local kid? Yeah, it does. You know, and I think anytime you can talk about representing where you're from, a New York City kid playing in New York City, playing in the Bronx, that's what it's all about. And, and you look at Shane, you know, obviously myself being from New York, him being from New York, that's an instant connection. You speak the same language. You speak the same language. You know the same deli. So that, that's the type of stuff you want, you want to talk about. But Shane's just a you wonderful You say pursuit, just exactly, like New yeah, Yorkers yeah, exactly. say pursuit. <laughs> so, you know, you have a guy like Shane who has an unbelievable work ethic. He's, he's so such a perfectionist and I think that's why you've seen his game evolve over years and he's gotten better and better every year and he's gonna go down as one of the Manhattan all-time greats and think of this he didn't have any scholarship offers come out of high school right well that's the thing yeah. things have definitely changed yeah. things have changed since you played mm -hmm. at Kentucky back yeah. when guys were playing for four years now they're yeah. in there for what just a couple of months and they're yeah, on to a the cup of coffee then they're yeah, getting exactly, millions. Yeah, exactly. yeah. but that actually lends itself to your program because you've got some older guys in there 20 21 years yeah. old your yes. fourth four-year seniors does it help you when you get into the tournament when you're maybe physically or mentally more stable I, you know I think there's no substitute for experience talent everyone Everyone has to have talent, but I think why you're seeing so much parity in college basketball especially is because you're seeing juniors and seniors at a lot of mid-major schools that are terrific basketball players. And then sometimes they might not have the talent of these terrific one-and-done guys, but their experience is the X factor. And when you have guys who know not necessarily what to do, but more importantly what not to do, that there's not a coach in the world that doesn't want that. Combine that with talent, you have yourself a real special formula there. That's why you see teams like Northern Iowa making yeah. deep runs in the NCAA yes. tournament and hopefully uh, Manhattan. Now, we are not done with you yet because when we come back, I'm going to ask you your thoughts on Rick Pitino. Welcome back. Steve Overmeyer alongside Manhattan coach Steve Masiello. Coach, I can't believe what I just heard. You're shaking your head. This right is unbelievable. We were you don't like Italian Italy's. food. We were this is more important than you don't like Italian food. You're missing out on chicken franchise, chicken parm, on a gut. And what's other, it's just, it's the pastas that I'm not down for, okay? I'll, I'll, take, I'll take the meatballs. Uh, all right. Okay. We're going to work I, on it. Like that. I said, I like the prosciutto, I like the moats, right. but still. All right. All right. Um, can we talk basketball? No, you can talk basketball. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm over. <laughs> you're, <now. laughs> are you sure you're going to be over yeah. this? Because honestly, all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> Rick Pitino. Yes. Your good friend. Yeah. Good coach. He, uh, uh, he's been asked about leaving Louisville over and over again, and this week he said, I don't know. It seems like rumors of him leaving yeah. always seem to follow, but maybe does this year seem, maybe does it feel a little different? I don't think so. I, I think when you have the success that Coach Patino's had um, and you, you've accomplished what he's accomplished, there are always going to be people that are speculating he's moving on. There are, He's always going to be in demand. People are always going to want him as a coach because he does such a terrific job. He's such a great coach. You're going to hear that about all great coaches across the country that they're leaving, whether you hear about Coach Calipari going to the NBA, you hear about Coach – I think it just comes with the turf. I mean, he's got a contract until 2025, yeah. yeah. you know, for, mm -hmm. forever. But if, if he does decide to hang him up, they, or if he does decide to leave Louisville, yeah. does it feel like – this would be it for him. Like, he wouldn't I, jump know, to another I, squad. I, I, I wouldn't know, but I just, you know, I know from my time working with Coach Patino how much he loves the game of basketball and how passionate he is about it. Uh, basketball is part of his life. Um, I, I, I can never imagine Coach Patino not coaching. That's just me personally. Um, but, you know, again, I don't know his situation. You say you're going to have to drag him off the court. Yeah, pretty much. Just like you, I would imagine. <laughs> Absolutely. No doubt about it. Uh, big picture, I want to talk about basketball in this area. Yeah. St. John's, yes. top program in the area, mm -hmm. but it's not been a very good season for St. John's. They've lost 16 straight. When they are not good, what impact does that have on the other schools in the area? Well, I think Coach Mullen's done an excellent job of, of rebranding the program and making it exciting again. He's got a great recruiting class. He's doing a great job of kind of getting the name back to where it was. Um, you know, I, I think when St. John's is up, I think it obviously is going to bring more attention to the metropolitan area and the New York area. There's no doubt in my mind Coach Mullen will have that program where he wants it and back up and being, you know, one of the perennial Big East powers. Um, and when that happens, I think that's good for everyone involved. Um, but that doesn't mean that other programs cannot, can't be successful without them either. Do you think you can win me over on Italian food? Absolutely. I'll take you to a great Italian place right after this. Absolutely. All right, all right. We've got time tonight, Let's so we just might have to do that. All right. 
I don't know if my girlfriend will like it on Valentine's Day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to feel like a third wheel. <laughs> Manhattan Jasper are uh, travel to Monmouth tomorrow night. Steve Masiello, great. Good luck in the game. <laughs> Best of luck to you as you uh, advance and hopefully third straight tournament for you. And we got to get you some raviolis. <laughs> Thanks right. for having me. <laughs>